Hello, I'm John Butler and I'm here talking today about one of the topics you've asked me to talk about, which is OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Well, this is a wide range of behaviours and thinking patterns that are very dysfunctional and affect people very powerfully in some cases, uh, less so in others, and I think there's probably a little bit of it for many of us in some area of our thinking and behaviour. Now, the obsessional thoughts are often very intrusive. They may have a, a very much a repetitive element to them, very obsessional. Uh, often the feeling if we don't do have these thoughts, something will be wrong, something can go wrong. And it's a feeling of inner conflict, of self-doubt. Have I switched off the light? Even though part of my mind I know I have. But another part of the mind, well, maybe you haven't. And there's that battle and the negative bias of our memory is always towards well maybe i haven't switched it off where in the normal circumstances most people would say yeah i've done it and i don't even think about it so on the way to the airport you start thinking have i turned off the gas have i didn't done whatever so this can reach very very extreme uh, states very extreme levels and then it becomes very crippling to people now when I started out with hypnotherapy, very rarely did people even talk about it. The general feeling that I got was that uh, it's very hard to treat these clients. And thankfully, over the years, that perception has shifted a lot. We now see that three quarters or more of people can get great benefit from therapy. And that therapy may involve some medication in some cases, as well as psychological therapy. We'll come to that a little bit later. So, Breaking down these thoughts, changing the patterns can easily be done in many cases. This is my experience. One of my very first ones was a lady who had very severe trichotillomania. And I was pleasantly surprised, and this doesn't happen all the time, how well she responded to direct programming, direct suggestion, nothing more. And then it turned out as she had a lot of other issues, and often there are other issues that go with it, which may be compounding the problem or maybe separate issues. Uh, that get interwoven with the problem. Depression may be there. It's very much an anxiety-based condition for most people. A fear that I have to push aside by this behavior, that if I don't do it, something is wrong, something is not right. And so this takes many shapes and forms, of course. Uh, compulsively checking, compulsive cleaning with contamination fears. Uh, there's compulsive counting, uh, compulsive feelings that I have to say certain words maybe in a religious context, or if I say one word wrong in the prayer, I've got to start all over again. So we do see kind of religious obsessions, and sometimes religion is very helpful to clients. So it very much varies person to person. The therapy always deals with what emerges. So we look at then uh, these kind of symmetry uh, behaviors that they do. The thing must be organized and ordered in the right way. Uh, certain objects must be in a certain position. And very intelligent people, can get trapped into this. People who are very functional in many ways in life can also have areas of life where they are very compulsive and obsessional. Uh, one of the early cases I remember reading about was a man who was a doctor and he was treated by another doctor in Harley Street. This was the 19th century and the person with the OCD had this bizarre idea that if he didn't do a certain ritual every day something terrible would happen to God and that's a pretty extreme idea but he was cured with daily therapy over about a year, I think. So that was a lot of sessions. Nowadays, I think we would expect to deal with this much more effectively uh, on a shorter term basis. So we do see a lot of improvements. We do see relapses and um, ups and downs, but people learn from them and overall get better in the long term for most people. No miracles, but good therapy for with therapists who know what they're doing. Now, sometimes the problem has a very deep psychological basis or it may have a genetic element to it. Certain brain areas are more activated and certain underactivated compared to the control groups when we look at these, uh, when we compare them in a, a, in a research setting. Now, and the good news is with modern scanning equipment, we show that as a result of the therapy, people's brains are really unlocked. We change the the bad loops, as it were, break them down, they're less active at least, and now healthy patterns of thinking and behaviors are implemented. Again, hypnosis is a very powerful role to play there as it works very much at that epigenetic 
and um, also the neuroplasticity level. So there may be a physical illness that triggers this. We sometimes see this with children, particularly a, a, after an infection. There may be a period where there is an excessive uh, immune response. We may develop into an autoimmune problem and then there becomes a form of obsessional compulsive behavior. Uh, traumas, people abusing their brains with drugs, and deep emotional conflict of shame and guilt will often express itself in forms of compulsive behavior. The very famous one in Macbeth, if you remember your Shakespeare, where Lady Macbeth is sleepwalking and she's then going through a hand washing ritual saying, out damn spot. She's trying to get the blood, the imaginary blood off of her hands because of her guilt of her role in the assassination of the king. And I think in the famous lines for Macbeth himself when he says, Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather make uh, rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the red one green. In other words, you'll never get rid of it. The feeling of contamination that he has within himself will now poison the world, pollute the whole world. And that's sort of the extreme of it now. We should never put it onto our clients. Oh, well, it must be because of your shame and your guilt that you're washing your hands. No, it could have a biochemical element to it that is independent of a, a basic emotional role. Now, of course, mind and body work so much together that sometimes it's hard to say which cause which. Hypnotherapy is a holistic therapy, so it can be brought to bear uh, in conjunction with medical therapy of chemical therapy, for example, SSRI, serotonin specific reuptake inhibitor drugs, and enhance their effects and help people get better quicker. So behavior, we say, is, and there's so much we could say about some of these patterns and how the kinds of programming that is used in hypnotherapy can alleviate and help the person move on from that kind of behavior. Um, some of the checking and compulsive behavior is also associated with, uh, in some cases, anorexia, body dysmorphic disorder. Uh, you have things like bulimia, anorexia, and other eating obsessions. And so we also have things like pathological gambling, skin picking. And it's not just a, a bit of a stress release by twitches and picking. This is a very much more serious form of maybe self-harming and damaging can be a part of it, self-punishment. So the obsessional compulsive behavior in this case has very deep inner conflict roots, just like with the shame and guilt and self-punishment, secondary gains even from it, which may be self-punishment. So we look into whatever it is that's required. If it's simple programming that takes care of it, that's great. If that frees the brain up, wonderful. If not, we have to dig a bit deeper into it. So we say behavior is the expression of energy, so it means something. What is that about? What is the inner conflict uh, if it's more than simply the result of a physical illness? So the standard therapy tends to be uh, SSRI plus behavior therapy or, and or CBT. So tracking, identifying the negative, obsessional, uh, extreme, unrealistic thinking and helping people become much more confident, getting rid of the pathological doubt, helping them to feel confident that in their thinking and in their actions, if I've switched off the light, it's off. They're not going into this uh, self, self-undermining, self-sabotaging form of thinking. So that kind of problem is resolved, and it may be related to lack of confidence in themselves that's just got triggered. There's some events in their lives now that are causing, might be going through marital breakup, and it's causing them to have more self-doubt than usual, and it's coming out in this uh, extreme behavior. Doubt, followed by then needing to correct that, to make sure I've done it properly, almost at a kind of perfectionistic level, although that can be a different problem as well. So there's a lot of labeling goes on in therapy, and some of it's very valuable to help people get a a kind of a handle on where they're, what's wrong and that other people have this problem. It can be very self-destructive when people become addicted to the labels. So we must help people deal with what emerge, 
get in there with their basic programming to make them aware of the behavior. When something is triggering it, let's say they're going to bring their hand to their hair and you give them a suggestion that says, as your hand begins to move up, you become aware of it. So it's not just an automatic action. You're very aware of it at that point and it's like an invisible barrier, maybe a, a plate glass or a plastic glass plastic sheet, something that interferes with you bring your hand up and you become very aware and now you're getting the confidence uh, on a graded basis to let go of that behavior, to not do it and still tolerate it, uh, be able to cope, still feel relaxed and confident in yourself. So a lot of good programming in different ways will help the individual if that's done by a competent therapist. Secondly, we go into analytical hypnotherapy where we need to cleanse the mind at a deep level because if there is that feeling I'm dirty I'm shameful and I do remember a woman once who was obsessed with colonic irrigation and she got to the point where she damaged her gut by was so obsessing about being clean but of course it was symbolic she didn't feel clean herself she felt dirty emotionally and that was the real root of the issue in her case so it's always a, with therapy Deal with what emerges, don't put it on the client that it's guilt, it's shame, it's sexual, it's this, it's that. Deal with what emerges, whether it's biochemical and or, or psychological. So this is a very quick overview of a very fascinating area in which hypnotherapy can have great value for people. So I hope you've got some points here if you haven't looked into this topic before and that you will look further into the uh, work that we do in Hypnotherapy Training International where we teach therapists how to deal with it and people come on our courses as clients to understand themselves and clear any such tendencies from their personalities. Thank you very much for listening and watching.